Um, since I've been at Marquette, uh, D Wade's been terrific. Um, just he's been around a lot. I think when guys get done with their careers, they have maybe a little bit more time and a little bit more. Um, they reflect back on the past more. Yes. Um, so he, he actually spoke at graduation a few years ago at Marquette. He was awesome. Um, no disrespect to this year's graduation speaker, but <laughs> I, I was at graduation um, this year and someone was like, you know, we didn't get D Wade. <laughs> so I think he set a precedent pretty high. Um, Jay's been awesome. You know, he's been terrific. He uh, comes in, and speaks to our guys, you know, once or twice a year. Doc has been great. Uh, you know, he'll, he, I have him give him the pregame talk uh, a okay. couple of years ago. This is when he was still coaching in Philly. And it just so happened that you guys played Philly that night. And then we had a day game. So Doc was in town. And usually I walk around the corner and I talk to the guys right before the game. So I walked around the corner, but then Doc Rivers was behind me. And I just kind of, he just walked and, and took the, the front of the room. And so that was pretty cool for the guys to hear from him. But I'll tell you the best former player story is Wes Matthews when he was here. Shout out to Wes, man. Um, dog Wes. You, you want to talk about an unbelievable representative of Marquette University, of the basketball program, of this state. He's from Madison. Yes. Uh, we, we were in a tough stretch in our season. This was my first year here. We had lost a few games in a row, and we had just lost a game in double overtime that, I hate this word, but we should have won. Um, <sighs> and hey, hey. Yeah, I, I hate it too, so that's why I said it. So, because I think should is the most dangerous word in sports. Yeah. What does that mean? But anyway, we're at a pivotal point in our season, and we're in a film session the next day, and Wes had texted me about coming by. So I said, man, I'd love for you to come by. So we sat in the back of the room and we're watching, showing clips from the game. And as you know, clips from those heartbreaking losses, yeah. those are tough to swallow because Ugh. as a player, you already know, okay, I understand I should have closed out harder. Uh, you're showing stuff that guys already know what they yeah. needed to do. But at the same time, from an accountability standpoint, you need to show certain things you have to. so that history doesn't repeat itself. Well, Wes was in the back and he pretty much took over the film session. And so the coaches stopped having to say anything. And he talked about what he was seeing on the clips from a player standpoint, but also from the standpoint of someone that you know, had been part of the program and had won big at Marquette and that was now playing in the NBA and having success in the NBA. And it was really, really powerful. And I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, but we ended up, we went and we won eight out of our next nine games in the Big East. I mean, these were hard games we were playing. Yeah. And it really was a turning point in our season to allow us in our first year with the basically a whole new roster almost to go to the NCAA tournament in our very first year. So I'll never forget Wes doing that. Man, it's out of the Wesley Matthews, man. You know, I think like he's staying here with Milwaukee too. It was incredible, man. It was just unfortunate. One year we had COVID, the next year it was just like injuries, this, that. But like, I really appreciate him. You know, I really look up to him as well. Like as a player, as a see, we, we stay in touch and everything is, he's, he's a great person, you know? Honestly, I actually have another dude that I do the animal facts, but like, no, I want to like just talk, you know, just basketball and start with you because like I'm learning so much on how you see college and how and what's your perspective on this. But uh, what's the most difficult? That like the, the other question would be like, what's the most difficult time you've had as a coach? Like, is it when you have to cut a player? Is it when you got to go play against a great player team? What's the most difficult part of it? being a head coach in college? Probably losing. Losing, huh? Yes. Um, I just, I, I, I never handled it so well. Um, but it's part of the game. Yes. And I think you guys in the NBA, because you play so many more games, it's different. you yeah. have a much healthier perspective and you take more of a growth mindset to winning and losing. Yeah. We won, okay, good, what did we do well? How can we build on this? We lost, 
okay, it's unfortunate. We don't want that to happen again, but it happened. It's part of the game. How do we grow from it? Yeah, no. In college, there's such an emotional attachment to losing that that's probably the hardest part. And for me, as a head coach, I'm having to manage that for myself, but then also for everyone else in the program. And so you have to get yourself right first, otherwise you're not gonna be worth much to anyone else. Mm. So it's certainly a process that I have to go through, but I would say that's the hardest part. I've coached as a head coach for 15 years, and I've had one losing season. And it was a bad losing season. It wasn't like 14 and 15. Like, it was a losing season. Yeah. And now, in retrospect, that was one of the most rich learning experiences of my life. And there's so many of things that we do now that have come out of what I learned during that season. And so it's hard in the moment yeah. because you're upset and, you know, nobody – takes kindly to losing, and you never want to get to the point where, ah, oh, we lost, no big no, deal. No, no, never, never, I don't care what, I don't but care what the situation is, never. That's probably the hardest part, and I would say with the players, those guys, as you know, they want to win more than anyone. And so we live in this day and age where everyone has an opinion and everyone is quick to bash someone when they don't play well or they don't win, but no one cares more than the players. No, no one, one does. And so trying to protect them and shield them, uh, if I could, I would hijack their phones for the entire season. <laughs> season yeah. Because there's just a, there's a lot of nastiness on there. And I think now with the proliferation of gambling um, oh my God. In, 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 in college sports. It's, wait, wait, wait. It's, it's, it's in college too? Yes. Yes. I thought it was just the uh, people it's, with the parlays and uh, what's, what's it called in, uh, in the NBA. It's in college, no, too? No, it's in college. And <laughs> I think one of the things that's really changed, man, uh, since I got into coaching is now after games, gambling, social media, boom, put them together. And I know you guys deal with this in the NBA. There's drunk guys. It's an epidemic in the NBA, by the way. In their parents' basement, in their underwear, their pajamas. They're literally wearing like a one-piece pajamas. And they're on social media criticizing our players. And our players, because and I explained this to them, you can't be obsessed with the good things people mm -hmm. say about you and then ignore the bad. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, no, it does not <laughs> so if you're going to attach yourself to the good, then you're also unfortunately attaching yourself to the bad. But I've seen guys get brought to tears and get brought to tears, temporary depression because of the way people have reacted to how they've played. And so that's probably the hardest part because, again, we're just trying to move forward and grow and develop. <laughs> This is certainly a roadblock that you can run into. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah, that's all done. Like that's the the that's the basketball part I wanted to know. But the and the last question, obviously, I want to end the podcast because I have so much respect for your time, coach. I don't want to keep you here all day, even though I would love for this to be like two, three hours. Coach, what is the origin of your name? Like, soccer. Like, because people bother asking me all the time, the time, all the time that like about my name. And they, yes. Like, where it comes from? Like, where, where does your name come from? So my name is probably the best thing my dad ever did for me. Uh, did not have a great dad. Uh, was raised primarily by a single mom. And that's a big part of what made me who I am or, or, or how I go about things today. But he did give me a great name. And so my name is Shaka Dingani Smart. So Smart I obviously got from him. That's his last name. My dad's from Trinidad. And he has 20 brothers and sisters. So there's a lot of smarts out there, out and about, um, including some siblings that I have that I've never even met. My first name is Shaka. My middle name is Dingani. Those names are both from Southern Africa. And they're both from an ethnicity that can be described using the term Zulu. Yes. You, you, you've heard of that before. 
Um, Shaka was a very, very influential, powerful, controversial figure that united hundreds of thousands of people in Southern Africa under this ethnicity, Zulu, as a way to counteract colonialism. So Europeans coming in yes. to Southern Africa to take over that part of the continent. And Shaka said, no, we're going to fight back. And he was an unbelievable warrior. In fact, if you, if you Google top 100 warriors of all time, you'll find him in that list. Uh, really, really good with war strategy. He invented this extra long spear um, that was very effective. At one point, they had just used spears that were a certain length. But he said, no, if we have these long ones and these short ones, that can make us more effective in warfare. His brother is named Dingani. So I'm named after two brothers. And what's crazy is, I haven't told a lot of people this, Dingani killed Shaka. And so Dingani actually, and this is oversimplified, but just in the interest of time, mm -hmm. he sided eventually with some of the European colonialists yes. as they were making their push. They kind of made a deal with them. And then they, the two brothers became enemies. And so Dingani ended up killing Shaka. So I, I'm probably one of the few people that has a name where one part of my name killed the other part of my name. No, it's it's uh, this is I think first of all you're one of the most interesting figures in uh in uh, NCAA. Is that correct? How I say it? it says NCAA in yes. college as a head coach because not because of your defense only, but your philosophy, the guy, the way you approach players and who you are as a person. But your English team doesn't makes it to your name makes it to <laughs> call a different level too. So man, I'd nothing. I would just man, thank you so much. I I really uh, I'm so glad that I was able to interview you. Yes, you know, great you know, to just... be on, man. <laughs> I'm you. a big fan, and we would love to have you come by our, our facility. Anytime. And anytime. meet our players. Notice. And uh, we, we, we'd love to get you some Marquette gear. Yes, to, to, please do, to, please do. Because I know you don't have, like, a college alma mater. So yeah, if I we get it. you some Marquette stuff, uh, you can rep us around okay, the city. I, I will, <laughs> and I will. Thank you so much, Coach. Uh, man, and again, guys, this is, this is the end of the show. You guys have been amazing. If you guys who want to watch the show, you can go on YouTube, the analysis show. If you want to listen to it, whatever you get your podcast from, it's available in every platform. Man, you know, I don't know if Coach has socials and stuff like that, but like follow his journey. Uh, go and get the, get the book, Reading for Your Lives. I'm, I'm about to get it today, so go do that. Man, Coach, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And the analysis, out. The analysis is recorded at No Studios, Milwaukee's creative hub and production studio.